Again, uh, this is Dr. Beck again with another chemistry video. Uh, this one is going to be hopefully a short one because uh, this is a review of the homework uh, from the last lesson. So, uh, as always, I'm showing you the part of the specification on the screen. If you need to pause that, please feel free. Otherwise, we'll continue. So, as always, um, for any lesson online, uh, make sure you're away from distractions, don't have any other tabs open. Not many questions today, as I'm simply just going to go through um, the, the working. But you will need a purple pen. Uh, you might want to review some of the calculations with a calculator. And just for reference, you might want to uh, have a periodic table in front of you just to check what I'm doing. OK, if you haven't got any of those things, uh, pause the video and go and get them. You can come back when you're ready. OK, so once again, we're going to start off with our hilarious chemistry joke relating to moles. OK, chemists love this kind of uh, wit and humour, including me. We can use moles um, to do many, many things, including uh, reacting masses. Uh, today, then, we're going to review um, the past paper uh, homework I gave you last time. Now we're going to review how we can use those reacting masses to decide, first of all, which reactant limits the amount of product formed and which is in excess. And then for the homework, especially for the extension, there was uh, an, an extra bit of challenge as to the, the product, uh, the amount of product for uh, a reaction. So just refresh our memories uh, as to those questions and what the homework actually was. I'm going to go through them fairly rapidly. Obviously, because this is a video, you've got the choice of going back and reviewing, uh, or if you think I'm doing it too slowly, you can put it on a slightly quicker, um, 1.5 or two times uh, the speed, whatever you want to do. Ultimately, though, we're simply marking uh, the correct answer. Okay, first of all, then, uh, five grams of iron and five grams of sulfur are heated together to form iron 2 sulfide. Uh, show that iron is limited, show that Fe is limited. So let's just go to the visualizer. So again, 42, we have this equation. And hopefully we noted that this is actually balanced, so nothing else to do. We have the masses of each, and they are expressed in grams. And we have this time not the relative formula mass, we have the relative atomic mass. For iron, if we look it up in our periodic table, that's 56. For sulfur, that is 32. Now, we have the same mass of these things, 5 grams. We do that calculation, and a bit of rounding up. It doesn't really matter uh, for this. At this stage, we're simply looking for um, excess or not. 0 0.089 and 0 0.156. Okay, I have rounded those numbers up a little bit. Now, looking back at the equation, we have a molar ratio of one to one. One mole of iron reacts with one mole of sulfur uh, in our balanced equation. However, we do not have this ratio. Instead, we have a ratio of 0 0.57 to one. How have I got that? I've uh, divided 0 0.156, I beg your pardon, I've decided 0 0.089 by 0 0.156. So we end up with a ratio of 0 0.57 to 1. So that means we have less iron than we need uh, given these masses. So we would say then that iron or Fe is the limiting factor. The iron is, sorry, limiting reactant. So iron is the limiting reactant. And there's uh, the working out for question 42. Okay, so purple pen now. That's how we work it out. Nice and simply. Let's have a look back at question 43. The Solve process, this is a particular chemical reaction uh, named after the person who uh, developed it. Uh, ammonia is recovered by the unbalanced equation shown. Uh, if 2 kilograms of ammonium chloride and 0 0.5 kilograms of calcium oxide react, show that the amount or the mass of calcium oxide is limiting. Okay, so already we've got some clues. It's, this is unbalanced. So let's go to our unbalanced equation. 
we have ammonium chloride with our calcium oxide and that's going to form calcium chloride plus H2O I'm going to have to drop down to a lower line to uh, to produce also ammonia now hopefully you recognize that we can balance this fairly simply like this and then we refer to our masses to work out the number of moles now notice we had a mass in kilograms so to do this properly we need to convert that to grams 2000 grams uh, the second one we have a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms and hopefully you recognize that that is also in the incorrect unit so that would be 500 grams we do the same thing again first of all we need this time to work out the relative formula mass now for ammonium chloride we look at our periodic table uh, we find that uh, we need to uh, add 14 to 4 times 1 plus 35.5 and if we do all that and add it uh, accurately that gives us 53.5 similarly for calcium oxide uh, we have a relative formula mass of 40 plus 16 which gives us 56 okay. again we do our calculation to work out the number of moles we have in this particular um, setup so 2000 divided by 53.5 equals 37.4 again I'm rounding up at each stage because yeah we, we weren't really being asked which one is the limiting one as long as it's obvious which is limiting we don't need to worry too much about lots and lots of decimal places and similarly we have uh, the number of moles of calcium oxide 56 um, so this will equal 8.9 Let's refer back to our uh, reactant uh, reaction up here. The molar ratio here of ammonium chloride to calcium oxide is, for our balanced equation, 2 to 1. Okay, so if we had 37.4 moles, we would require 18.7 moles of calcium oxide that's the same ratio again a bit of rounding up there okay but we note we only have in uh, this situation 18 uh, 8.9 moles so we would say we have less calcium oxide than we would require for this quantity of ammonium chloride so therefore the calcium oxide is limiting this is the limiting reactant so well done that's the kind of working out we need we need to compare uh, the quantity we do have with the quantity we would need for this and calcium oxide is limiting good let's go to the next question now so here i'm just going to flick back to uh, question uh, this is the extension question because there's another step we need to do so this one, question 44, we're going to go through in a similar way. This is a reaction between methane and oxygen. So we write down the chemical symbol or the chemical formula for methane. And it's going to react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. We note, of course, that it is not balanced. We therefore balance it. In this case, this is what we do. And then we work out, the, in this case, the relative formula masses. So hopefully we know how to do this by now. I'm going to spend ages. We're adding up the 12 from carbon plus 4 times 1. Here it's 16. In a similar way for a molecule of oxygen, 32, 44, and 18. We uh, have our mass in grams, so that's all good. We have 17, so we're going to divide that by the relative uh, formula mass of, um, of methane, and that will give us 1.06. And in a similar way, we're going to do the same thing for oxygen. We 
to divide that by the relative formula mass for a molecule of oxygen, and that would give us 0 0.625. We then uh, divide both of those by 1.06, and we end up with a ratio of 1 to 0 0.59. Now, if we look in the formula, we see that this should be 1 to 2. Okay, it needs to be 1 to 2. It isn't. Therefore, what's missing? Well, we have much less oxygen than we need. Okay, so here, oxygen, O2, is limiting. Next question is, how much um, carbon dioxide would we produce given uh, this situation? Now, we must also always look at the limiting factor here. This is going to cause the reaction to stop when it's all used up. So the limiting factor here, the limiting reactant, is the 0 0.59 moles of oxygen. So we have 0 0.59 moles of oxygen. Let's have a look at the molar ratio in our balanced equation. Well, oxygen, 2 moles to 1 mole of carbon dioxide. So the ratio needs to be 2 to 1. So we need to manipulate this ratio. We need a ratio of 2 to 1. So that will make our ratio become 0 0.59 to 0 0.295. Again, a degree of rounding up involved here. This would then uh, tell us the number of moles of carbon dioxide that would be produced. Therefore, we can go to our mass equation, and the mass is the number of moles multiplied the relative formula or relative atomic mass. Here we have the relative formula mass, so we'll plug those numbers in. 0 0.295 multiplied by the relative formula mass of carbon dioxide. And the relative formula mass of carbon dioxide is, of course, 44. We end up, therefore, with um, an answer, okay, rounding up to 1 dp, 13.0 grams. 1 dp. Okay, so well done. Again, we're just reviewing that, uh, those answers. If you got that right, fantastic. Um, purple pen that. If you made any errors, obviously, uh, you can go back and uh, recheck the video uh, whenever you like. Next question, the final question, again, a little bit more difficult as well, because this is uh, more complicated. Uh, basically, if you can answer this accurately, then you are looking at those very, very high uh, marks in a triple science paper. If you're confident with this, then that's fantastic. And something you're unlikely to forget, to be honest, but uh, obviously we need to review and revise uh, regularly. Back to the visualizer, question 45. We have aluminium reacting with fluorine. Now, fluorine is always a molecule, F2, and that's going to produce aluminium fluoride. Uh, of course, we note that this is not balanced, so we're going to balance that up now. Here we go. Uh, we look up in the periodic table, the relative formula mass, sorry, relative atomic mass, and we can either use that or then uh, multiply that appropriately for the relative formula masses for these things. So aluminium, the AR is 27. Here we have, of course, 19 times 2 for the molecule, 38. And for this, 27 plus 19 times 3. This will give us a relative formula mass of 84. Uh, we note that we have 28 grams of aluminium, and its relative uh, atomic mass is 27. And here we have 49 grams, and its relative formula mass is 38. We uh, calculate then that ratio. This gives us 1.04 to 1.29. We look back to our balanced chemical equation and we note that this ratio should be 2 to 3. 
get two moles of aluminium reacting with three moles of fluorine molecules. Should be two to three. Uh, if we scale up our 1.04 to that ratio, we're going to uh, multiply by one point uh, by three. Sorry, I beg your pardon. 1.04 times three divided by two would give us 1.56. So note, we actually have 1.29 moles we needed to maintain this ratio to have a complete reaction, uh, 1.56. We don't have that, so we would say that fluorine, or F2, is limiting. Okay, so the question then becomes, well, how much aluminium fluoride would we produce given this mass of, uh, of fluorine? We refer back to our limiting, excuse me, our limiting reactant and the quantity in moles, which is this 1.29. We ignore this bit here right now. So we have in that mass of fluorine 1.29 moles of F2, and that's going to react to produce a number of moles of uh, AlF2. Now we look back once again at the equation. We ignore the AL, we don't need that, so we've got 3 to 2. This ratio should be 3 to 2. So we scale this accordingly. 1.29 <clears throat> multiplied by 2 divided by 3 will give us, rounding up, 0 0.86. This tells the number of moles of AL, sorry, I beg your pardon, ALF3. LF2, sorry. So 0 0.86 moles. All we need now to do is use our equation. The, the mass is the number of moles, 0 0.86, multiplying the relative formula mass. Let's refresh our memory. That was 84 units. So we multiply that by 84. And then we come up with a quantity of 72.24. So well done if you got that far. If you're getting that far, then we're easy looking there at that sort of grade seven, grade eight, grade nine level of understanding. And if you're showing you're working out, <clears throat> excuse me, like I have, that's going to stand you in good stead for not dropping marks um, in exams. Okay, so hopefully you found that useful. There will be a <clears throat> another video for today, uh, which uh, will be based upon an, a video somebody else has produced. So two videos in one day, you lucky people. For now, though, uh, this is what we've been up to. And we've had a chance today to answer some very quite, some really quite difficult questions. As always, if you want to get in, in, in contact, get in touch, uh, please do so by email. Uh, until next time, however, thank you very much. Have a good day.